The Italian top flight, better known as the Serie A, has delivered arguably the most incredible and pulsating title race in Europe this season. That is the only one out of Europe's top 5 leagues that actually have the best and unpredictable title race which could possibly go down the wire at the end of the season. As exciting as this title race currently is, many are quite skeptical that this incredible 5 horse title race could later be spoiled similar to what happened in the 2015-16 season by the enormous elephant in the room, Juventus. After all, in that season, Juventus managed to overturn their worst start to a league season since 1912 after embarking on a 15-game winning streak and won 26 out of their next 28 matches to reclaim the Scudetto. So this is not an unfamiliar territory for them, but the problem is that this is a completely unfamiliar situation to the one they found themselves in during that season and that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. How did the Serie A become the most exciting league in Europe today? In order to be able to answer that, we need to first briefly look at the decline or downfall of the Serie A, as this is an entirely different topic for another video, so we're just going to briefly look into it here. Throughout the 1980s and 90s, the Serie A was hailed as the best league in the world, boasting talents such as Zinedine Zidane, Hernan Crespo, Gabriel Batistuta, Paolo Maldini, Diego Maradona, the list goes on and on. But due to many issues which were both in and out of their control, the popularity of the league gradually declined and so did the quality too. The formation of the Premier League in the early 90s played a huge role in that as this newly formed breakaway league became the latest attraction for footballers which was made even more evident when Serie A superstars such as Henan Crespo, Juan Sebastian Veron and so on left the league in order to play in the Premier League. The Premier League, in order to grow, started to extend their reach to several parts of the globe, leaving Serie A to become this old-fashioned league that refused to move along with the times. This would have been great though, as it would have still created a platform where die-hard Italian football fans could watch and enjoy their style of football as opposed to this new and fast-paced league. But that was wrong, as the poor state of the stadiums which was owned by each club's local councils, many of which were last renovated before the 1990 FIFA World Cup in Italy, made it incredibly frustrating for fans who wanted to come out to support their favorite teams, thus leading to the near empty stadiums we are used to seeing nowadays. And then, the Calcio Poli scandal came to light. This again is a broad topic meant for another video which I'll quickly summarize here. This was a match-fixing scandal which involved top Italian clubs such as Juventus, AC Milan, Fiorentina and so on and was an event which led to many questioning the integrity and competitiveness of the league, thereby making the decline even worse. From the period of 2012 to 2020, Italian football was ruled by one club and that was Juventus, after some of the other giants, particularly the Milan clubs, fell to their own demise. Juventus under Antonio Conte, Massimiliano Allegri and Maurizio Sarri led the club to 9 consecutive Scudettos and had addressed one of the issues which led to the league's decline and that was to get their own stadium, as by 2011, the club moved out of the Estadio della Alpi to a new and modern 41,500 seat capacity ground, the Allianz Stadium. Although they're not the only ones to have done this as the likes of Udinese, Sassuolo and more recently Atalanta as of right now currently own their own stadiums with the likes of Roma, Fiorentina and the two Milan giants AC Milan and Inter Milan set to follow suit. For a while now, during Juventus' consecutive Scudetto Hall, the league was actually quite competitive as the likes of Roma and Napoli have tried to mount serious title challenges to Juventus, but in the end, they overcame everything until the moments before the arrival of Cristiano Ronaldo. You see, many people feel that the current Serie A title race is currently this exciting because Juventus are currently not at their best, thereby stripping off the element of predictability in the race, but for me or according to my opinion, this is not entirely true. Although yes, the title race this season and last season is and was wide open because of the underperformance of Juventus, but I think right now other teams in the Serie A have gotten stronger. And it's not like before where they had to contend with either one or two genuine title contenders, they now have to contend with four genuine title contenders and could be five depending on where Mourinho and his Roma side's heads are at. At the end of the 2017-18 season, Juventus didn't even think to consider making themselves stronger for the league as they were now only interested in the Champions League, showing a clear sign that they were underestimating the chasing pack. And this was even furthered when their biggest competitors at the time, Napoli, had lost their manager to Chelsea. So to them, 
They already disarmed both Napoli and Roma by taking their best players and now Napoli had lost their manager so it was now a case of uh, ok guys I think we're clear so let us ignore our aging midfield and bring in one of the world's best ever footballers to an attack that's already stacked so we can finally win the Champions League yeah 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 we can win Serie A with our eyes closed yeah yeah that's that's just easy yeah yeah who needs Higuain anyway who needs Higuain who needs Higuain <laughs> enough of all that all jokes aside Ronaldo wasn't the problem here just like more recently at Manchester United, Juventus brought him to a team that had a declining midfield. They only saw the fact that Ronaldo was the one who denied them the 2016-17 Champions League title and knocked them out of the 2017-18 Champions League without even looking deeply to how that even happened. Ronaldo was a monster who constantly haunted them on the European stage because he had a world-class midfield around him, one of the best of all time. So moving from Modric, Cruz and Casimiro to Kedera, Matuidi and Pjanic was not the best of ideas. Not saying these players are bad, but apart from Pjanic, the rest of the midfield was on a decline. And this mistake is what cost them their Serie A throne. It didn't happen in Ronaldo's first and second season, but by the time the third season was over, the damage had already been done, despite Juve's efforts to rectify them. But considering the fact that before, the other Serie A clubs couldn't stop them despite an aging midfield, what changed so rapidly? Well, the change was a direct result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, Inter Milan and AC Milan were getting stronger before the pandemic as Inter appointed the man who started the entire Juventus era of dominance and with him came the likes of Romelu Lukaku, Alexis Sanchez, Ashley Young and so on. And AC Milan under Stefano Pioli brought in Zlatan Ibrahimovic from the MLS. Juventus was still financially strong enough to suppress these teams and just throw money at whatever they wanted. After all, that was how they got Matthias De Ligt. But because of the pandemic, the entire league was somewhat in reset mode. And because of this COVID-19 pandemic, Juventus came leveled with so many other Serie A clubs. Atalanta who appointed Gampiano Gasperini in 2016 are now and ever present in the top 4 scene. Napoli, the club who resisted offers for their best defenders Kalido Koulibaly in the past, are starting to flex their muscles. Inter, previously under Antonio Conte and now under former Lazio boss Simone Inzaghi, are currently charging for the Serie A title with an aging striker. AC Milan, under Stefano Pioli, brought in arguably their most influential signing in recent years and are now locking horns with their city rivals with two aging strikers in their squad. Raise your hand if you thought replacing Lukaku with Dzeko over the summer was a good idea. Yeah, that's what I thought. And Jose Mourinho, who came to Roma and took Tammy Abraham from Chelsea, although mounted a serious title challenge at the start of the season, are currently nowhere to be seen. This title race has been one of the most unpredictable in years. Stop what you're doing! Because this video has a sponsor today. Sorry, just kidding. Just not yet at least. Please, if you're enjoying this video so far, I really appreciate it if you drop a like. It really helps with the algorithm so my small channel can grow. And please help me hit 500 subscribers by subscribing. We are so close. Thank you all as you're doing so. So let's get right back to the video. As I was saying earlier before I stupidly interrupted my own video, the title race has been one of the best in years and although Juventus are down, they're not going to be down for long as their January signings have proven it. And if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you're probably aware of my love for Dusan Blahovic. He's one of my favorite strikers in Europe and sorry for Arsenal for not getting him. Now let's talk about the Euro 2020 tournament. Serie A was the second most represented league with 71 players coming from the Italian top flight, only second behind, you guessed it, the Premier League with 118 players. And the winners of the tournament, Italy, had just four players in their squad who played outside of the Serie A before the start of the tournament. Serie A has so far been able to overcome many of the challenges put towards it, and if they can finally start to deliver in Europe outside of the domestic leagues, we could well start to see the full resurgence of Italian football. What was initially meant to be a fairy tale return has now quickly turned into a night. No knowledge on the sporting side of running the club was made to oversee everything. From Alexis Sanchez claimed that after his first training session at the club, he wanted to leave it as a commercial opportunity which would do nothing more than fill the bank accounts with a living in a world where players now prioritize their personal stats over that of the teams. 